Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we are returning to the Great War Western Front, a new real-time tactical combat game and turn-based uh, war game by the folks at Petroglyph. Petroglyph Games are the folks who uh, recently did the remaster of the Command & Conquer games. They actually have sort of uh, their founders were with Westwood Studios back in the day, so they have a sort of a Command & Conquer background. Uh, but then they also have made a bunch of classics. The first game they made as a studio was Star Wars Empire at War. So, yeah, that's uh, that's a tough that's a tough act to follow. They've made a couple of really good games since then. Uh, the Grey Goo was kind of mixed. That was another RTS that I've I played a little bit of, but that was sort of uh, a game that people seem to either love or hate. Uh, but the Great War Western Front is their newest game, which just came out. A couple of weeks ago and this takes a look at world war one on the western front uh, we are playing as the central powers or specifically germany uh, in this particular campaign and we've seen a bit of a mixed bag so far in our let's play uh, we have taken arras from the i guess it was the british at the time uh, and extended the front further west it has lengthened our own front line and created a bit of a salient for ourselves but it's also extended the ypres salient over here and perhaps opened up the opportunity if we were to be very successful with cutting off the allies in the north from their point of supply at calais uh, which is the point that all British reinforcements come in along the channel ports. So we've been trying to drive the British out of bruy le boussiere but we have failed in multiple attacks there. We had it down to one star. One final attack would have pushed us through and taken the hex, uh, but we forgot in our McClellan-like genius to attack one turn and the star regenerated. And frankly, it's just a very difficult hex to take. There is a lot of defensive advantages in this hex if we're attacking out of Ra. Uh, and so I don't know if it makes sense to keep pushing at Bray or if it makes sense to shift north to Hazerbrook so we can bring our forces at Lille and Ra both in simultaneously. The problem with Bray is we can only attack from one direction, which means we can only reduce it by one hex per turn. In theory, even though Hazerbrook has three stars, uh, which means you have to hit attack it successfully three times, um, it is more exposed to, to multiple directions of our troops, and so that would give us a possible opportunity in taking that. Of course, if we take Hazebrook, it does shorten the encirclement we could make. Uh, you know, we'd take Hazebrook uh, and then possibly Dunkirk or Calais, but then we'd only really cut off Ypres, uh, and there's not many troops there right now. The flip side of that is it would shorten our line uh, by about two hexes uh, and would allow us to concentrate forces better elsewhere, um, and perhaps could allow us to, to move in on Calais after that. I'm not sure. We'd have to see. Um, with that being said, in the south, things haven't gone as well. The French have attacked and taken the Hex of Leon, uh, which uh, has sort of exposed a bit of a soft underbelly of our front line here. No immediate concern of them attacking and cutting any troops off, but it's not a great situation to be in uh, with this Hex just sort of jutting into the, the center of our line. There have been other attacks and battles and whatnot along near Nancy, Colmar, other places like that. We've attacked Sant Meinhold a couple of times, uh, but we haven't really seen much success or progress in that regard. Um, we do have 1,200 gold, so we are running a little low on gold. Supplies at 800. Good enough for a couple battles, but not great. We have moved pretty far down the engineering line. Uh, the game starts with the central powers having efficient artillery, which reduces the cooldown on field artillery for heavy guns. We have also unlocked uh, the uh, efficient light artillery. Uh, we've also unlocked siege artillery and then the rolling barrage. We have not used the rolling barrage in a battle yet, I don't think, uh, but we've gone decently down the engineering route. We've also gone down the logistics route, unlocking the storage tent, which allows us to build supply depots, wartime donations, which increases our income to 1,200, and storage shack, which unloads supply depot phase two, which improves the amount of supply you can bring to a battle via a supply depot. We've also unlocked the trench engineering, uh, but we haven't gone further down the trench side of things. I'm thinking maybe we should go with the wire defenses and cheap wire production to give us barbed wire. That seems like it could be a, a winning strategy if we're going to be on the defensive. We've also unlocked fighter planes and balloons, uh, efficient balloon production, which reduces the cost of balloons. We've unlocked infantry helmets, which improves the durability of infantry and the field hospital, which lowers the cost of replacing troops after a battle. Um, and I'm thinking maybe going down the intelligence route so that we can get to the uh, army intel, I guess, army in enemy inspection, which will 
give us more research points when we complete events. Um, but uh, that's that's kind of just a thought. I'm not sure yet. We're not going to do anything this turn because we have no research points to um, uh, to spend right now. Um, in terms of what we're going to do this turn, I mean, we do have one event, which is to demoralize the enemy, uh, defeat 10 British infantry companies. We've got five turns to do that. That should pre be pretty easy. We fight one battle and we'll do that. I don't think I'm going to attack anywhere or do anything this particular turn. We did bring our siege guns into Arras and we could launch an assault from here, but I actually think going over onto the defensive a little bit might not be a terrible idea. What I would really like to do is buy a second siege artillery battery and then really ha hammer wherever we're going to attack. One siege artillery battery allows you to bombard the front line for two days, which gives you a 10% chance of destroying enemy trenches. Two siege artillery batteries gives you a 20% chance, I believe, of destroying enemy trenches and allows you to bombard for up to four days. Additionally, if I was gonna attack Hazelbrook, which is sort of where my head is going, Lille is currently embarked in a large storm, which means we can't fight with troops out of Lille. And so I think it makes sense to wait one more turn, although we are getting dangerously close to winter at this point. Uh, it is September of 1915. Uh, and so, uh, you know, um, that's not great. That's going to start bringing winter weather in to interfere with us. I am a little nervous that the enemy might attack out of Leon uh, and try and uh, maybe take Noyon or Raythal. Those are possible uh, points that the enemy might try to attack. Uh, interestingly enough, the enemy is very weak at Nancy, which makes me compelled to attack. I sense weakness. I sense weakness. Perhaps we should attack the British at Nancy. There's only a single core there, and it might cause the enemy to divert reinforcements south. It doesn't really offer any strategic advantage, but it is... It is an option. It's the only place along the front where they have a single core. And we do have troops at Moorhang and Metz who could potentially launch the attack successfully. Additionally, we could also attack bar le -Duc and Nancy and push the front line back here. But it would extend our front somewhat dangerously. So I think rather than attack there, I'm going to take one core of uh, conscripts and move them to Noyan, which is our own little salient here, uh, to reinforce there. And then I think we're also going to take one core out of uh, Sarbrook. Oh, well, there's only, there's three cores there. What does the enemy have? They only have three. Oh, Jace. Let's take one out of Colmar, um, another conscript core, and we'll move them to Rethel to reinforce the troops there in the event that the enemy tries to attack out of the Leon salient. Terja, thank you very much for the gift subs. Appreciate the support. We'll give it a moment here for the alerts to come in. I do appreciate that quite a bit. Yeah, taking Verdun would shorten the, the front. Uh, we've tried. We've attacked Saint Meinhold a couple of times to very little effect. We could try it again, but it's not an easy hex to attack. I'm curious about bar le -Duc. But yeah, taking Verdun would obviously be a, be a nice strategic uh, advantage here. It would shorten our line a bit. Thank you for the follows to Obloak and Small. And, uh... Mm, oh, apparently it's a majority of Belgian troops at Chateau Thierry. That's interesting. All right. Well, we will let the next turn pass and see what the enemy does. What would I do after I take Nancy? No, I, I don't know. It would just be an opportunity for a cheap victory. I don't know that. And maybe it would draw enemy troops south, right? Like, that's the possible advantage is it could draw enemy troops away from from our uh, you know from our other more endangered points. Meanwhile, it does look like the enemy wants to attack at uh, Noyon out of Compagna. Uh, and so I think we're actually going to engage in this battle. I'm tempted to just auto resolve because I don't think that costs us anything from a supply perspective. So I, I do think it makes it harder to build up for a defense. And if we just auto resolve, it kind of acts more like a, a probing action. Of course, the way I understand it, the enemy doesn't pay as much either if you if you do that. So if we think we can win a pretty decisive victory, it might make sense to fight the battle. I've been operating under the assumption that the enemy gets a bonus in both gold and supplies, which seem to be the initial consensus in the Steam threads for this game. But uh, I don't know if they've toned that down at all. I haven't, I haven't honestly played this much a whole lot in the last week. So uh, I've been a bit busy. So 
Um, I guess we'll fight the battle and we'll just see what happens here. This is a relatively green hex. Like there is some, oh, never mind. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of craters here. But at least on our end, I don't think we've been attacked here before. You can see we don't even have any trenches to speak of along our front here. It's almost entirely empty, so we've got to go ahead and build that stuff. Um, so let's make sure... As, okay, so there would I've been told that forests give a huge advantage, so we don't want to give the enemy cover. Uh, I can't put... Can I put... Oh, I can. Okay, so let's put some trenches up here in front of the wood line. So the enemy can't use the woods. I don't want to make any really long trenches. Um, ideally, you could, like, in theory, you'd benefit from linking your trenches. But uh, per my understanding, well, per my experience, you're better off not linking trenches. Because if you link trenches, then it is much easier. And we could go with, like, the historical, like, zigzaggy trenches. But if you link trenches, it is easier for the enemy to break your lines because... They can just move along the trench line rather than needing to actually, um, like, go back over the top. If these trenches are not linked, every time they want to advance, they have to go back over the top into the open ground. If we do not link those trenches, they do not have to, or they, th if we do link those trenches, they do not have to go back over open ground. Um, and so that's, that's something to consider. Yes, multiple trenches, definitely a good thing to do in this game. Apparently the game doesn't want me to do, th like, this This X section is not, not happy. It does not want me to uh, build there. Also having flanks to your lines that guard like open areas and whatnot big thing you should do you don't want to just have like a single line because if they break that line then you are very much exposed to flanking attacks they can just roll up your flank i think we're generally pretty good here we'll we'll add an additional line here on the left the enemy tends to like to hug the lines the front lines a bit uh or not the lines like the edges of the map a bit All right, we have 80 regular infantry units. Units are cheaper when you build, buy them pre-battle. So we are going to see how well we can fill these lines out. I haven't put my artillery on the map yet. I'm going to wait on that for a moment. The enemy tends to be very good with its use of light artillery, which can suppress your troops and make things very difficult on you. So that is 18 units here for one line across the front and then part of a secondary line i want to save room for at least two or three artillery batteries oh let's pull these guys back okay, one other thing is the enemy can deploy balloons as far forward as like up here so one thing we may want to consider is balloons is this destroy building i think it is also apparently there's barbed wire over here which means i'm guessing the allies have barbed wire because i haven't seen barbed wire in any of the battles we've fought against them yet and we haven't developed it all right so that's at 26 let's go ahead and build some artillery units now heavy artillery is ideal i think in the defensive light artillery is better in the defensive or in the offensive because you can suppress enemy positions that you're attacking we're probably not going to do a lot of light artillery stuff in this particular battle. I don't want my artillery to be too vulnerable to enemy counter battery fire, so I think we'll remove it sort of back to the edge of the map here. It should still cover our whole front line, though, pretty comfortably. So we'll go ahead and put uh, two batteries back here. All right, that consumes quite a bit of supply, 180. I'm wondering if a balloon makes sense. Let's hold off on a balloon. And again, I, I'm a little uneasy about putting MGs on the map because they tend to be pretty pr pretty vulnerable to enemy artillery. But this location is fairly far back. So we'll go ahead and put the MG here on the edge of the map to cover a flanking maneuver there. We'll see if the enemy uh, can actually get there. 
And uh, it depends on whether they can see it too. And we'll also cover this edge of the map. There. So we'll put in two MG nests to cover the flanks. The nice thing about MG nests is they don't take up sort of your cap limit of troops. And then we'll also put some additional troops. We've got two lines here and here. In my experience, especially with these early trenches, you can only have one unit on the firing step anyway, so it doesn't make a lot of sense to have double units. The exception is in the scenario where you're going to engage in melee combat, and even more so when you're involving melee combat and your troops don't uh, don't have interlinking trenches, so they can't easily reinforce. But we'll put one on each wing. And we'll go from there. So that's what we're going to start with. We're going to go ahead and begin the battle. What you need is to energi energize our artillery batteries. Well, we do have the research that speeds up their... Uh, well, we just cut down that tree. That speeds up their cooldowns or reduces their cooldowns. Let's wait. The enemy's going to have balloons. Let's wait and see if we can find out where they are. They should pop up on the map once they raise them. Which I can't imagine will be too long. I'm sure they're going to have balloons on this map. Here we go. They've got one. One balloon's over here. Now the problem is I don't have a visual on it, so I can't exactly see where its tether is to. I've tried guessing before, and I'm never usually that great, but let's just, like... Right here seems like about right, right? Or is it further down? I, I always struggle with that. But we'll guess. We'll try and take the balloon out. I don't have the tech yet for counter battery uh, or anti balloon air attacks, which would be nice. Unfortunately, fighters do not provide any air cover either. Well, let's see if we can uh, we can take this balloon out. It does take time. It's probably going to take at least three or four barrages, assuming we even targeted the right place. So it didn't come down with the first barrage. You can see just how much of the map a heavy battery gives you coverage over, which means they're probably going to have coverage over us. The alternative is we could send, we could send an individual infantryman out. Let's do that. Maybe they can get a visual. There's probably an MG that's going to chew these guys up. I don't mind if they die, though, as long as they serve their purpose. So let's go ahead and get those infantrymen out there. We'll drop one more barrage when we can in this general area, but in the event that it doesn't come down, maybe we can uh, we can get a visual on where they're at. You know, this is, a, this is an armed reconnaissance, right? Like, we're sending these guys out... Uh, they're kind of like, you know, Marine Recon, right? Like, go tell us where the bad guys are so we know where to where to hit them. I'm sorry if it gets you killed, but that's the job, boys. You think I aim too low? You think it's further up this way? Remember, we're trying to hit the winch, the winch, so not the, the, the truck. All right, let's see. We're getting close. We're not under fire yet, so the... Oh, there we go. So I think we're actually off to the right a little bit. We are doing damage to it. There's the enemy artillery. Ooh. You know what would be real neat is if we could destroy these guys. We're still not... Oh, we're taking fire from someone. Oh, there's the guns. And we're dead. There's, there's Canadians there, it looks like. But we've got the winch truck, and we've got two batteries of enemy artillery sighted in. So now that the recon went up there and got themselves killed and also chewed up the enemy, we can uh, we can try and drop some arty on these guys. Now, this does cost supply, which isn't great. Because, again, we don't want to spend too much supply in these battles because we will draw from the main supply. But maybe we'll have some luck here. I think the first barrage was actually pretty on target. The second barrage is not. I'm going to try and hit these enemy artillery batteries, too. We will know when we destroy the enemy balloon for what it's worth. Why do our troops already have a red number? These guys, the red is just indi indicative of the cooldown on the, uh, or on how long they're firing and then they're gray when they're cooling down. Enemy is launching an attack on our left flank. Oh my God, that's a lot of them. 
and they're using light artillery to suppress our troops. That is, that's a good deal of enemy troops. They're going to hit that first trench and probably overwhelm it because my artillery is focused on other things. Oh man, if ever there was a target for artillery. If ever there was a target for artillery and I wasted it. Good thing these trenches aren't uh, all interlocked, huh? Because this front line getting wiped out doesn't actually mean anything for the troops behind it. All right, we got we got a couple of these guys. Goddamn Canadians. We'll call in some reinforcements here and some of these trenches in the next line. We will put them in the actual as double trench, double trenchmen, just because that way they won't uh, as easily... I'm actually kind of tempted. Let's do this. Let's see if we can take out these enemy trenchments. Maybe we can go for the enemy artillery. Maybe they're not guarded. I feel like the artillery to the left here may not actually be super well guarded. I gotta take out these guns. These light guns are just an absolute nuisance. Now, the enemy does have, a, have to advance over open ground. This wood line does give them cover, which is not great. Make these guys advance through artillery fire. But I don't think they'll overwhelm a trench of two. Oh, but they're engaging enemy infantry in front of the guns. So there's that. Alright, so we are taking out a few of these enemy troops in the open. We have destroyed a couple of their, their troops. The light guns are suppressing us. I don't think they'll be able to overwhelm this this trench line of two, I hope. I mean, maybe they will, but we've got, we've got reinforcements in reach. That artillery fire late. They're trying to... Oh, they're suppressing our machine gun there in the flank. And I think we will... Let's withdraw this unit to save some supply and post-battle stuff. Let's also withdraw this unit. When you withdraw units, you don't, I think you don't pay gold to replenish them after the battle, I think. Hit him. There we go. Hit those guys in the open, weaken their morale, weaken their manpower. Oh, there's a whole lot of them up this way. Can we weaken these enemy artillery batteries? It'd be great if we could. All right, we destroyed an enemy elite infantry company there in the open. All right, these guys are shooting at my troops, moving across the open, trying to reinforce our trench. So we're going to lose that squad. Shift these troops left. They're in the trenches so they can move around more easily. Right, the lead unit there got wiped out in this trench by the French. Their lead infantry are doing a bit better, as would be expected. 
We're definitely inflicting more casualties on them than they on us so far. Let's bring those reinforcements in. We're going to pound our own trenches here to try and weaken these enemy elite troops. Once we finish this elite unit, we're going to shift left. The troops are coming in waves. All right, let's try one more thing. I'm going to gamble here. I'm assuming those waves of enemy troops were going left and not defending those guns indefinitely. So let's see if we can uh, do anything about that. Got those elite troops. Right, we've got the reinforcements coming up. I don't know if they'll get there in time. Oh, we lost this other trench line here. The left flank is crumbling. I don't have a lot of reserves in the next line back. The troops are getting hit as they cross no man's land, but I don't see... There's three enemy light batteries here? Shit. Well, the infantry seems to be going up. Maybe we've got a chance. Two Canadians there. We did get some reinforcements into both of these hexes. Right, the infantry is dealing some serious hurt on these enemy trenches or enemy guns. Advances in front, advance in front of them because you can't shoot when you're under fire from light guns. That's what they freaking do to you. Come on, finish this battery off. Just one more gun. The enemy's using elite infantry to mop up. We pretty much got one of the batteries. Oh, we did get one of the batteries. Now we'll drop Artie on these stationary elite troops. That's a pretty good exchange over there on the left. Uh, I need more troops over here. calling in reinforcements we did get overrun on the left but we knocked out one of the enemy artillery batteries so that at least should help and they just overran this other position near x they still have quite a bit of light guns pouring fire into us let's go ahead and try and see if we can take out the remaining enemy batteries if we can at least get one more that'll i think even the odds a bit here Can we... Oh, those guys are out of the trench. Nice. Can we try and retake this trench line back up here? Maybe. I don't have any light guns. Some light guns might have been nice. I'm going to attack here if they're softening. Right, these guys got into the trench lines. We're going to drop Artie and knock out that, that Canadian infantry section. Got another Canadian infantry section here. Go try and engage this enemy are already up here. We already did a little bit of damage with our own artillery batteries. Can you guys shift left and then just fire? We're not in range of this HQ or of this objective, really? All right, we're gonna get this other enemy battery. There's an MG out this way, fucker. Got him. All right. I think that's their last artillery battery. I could be wrong. They might have more, but again, that's two batteries down. Let's 
knock these guys out they're calling in reinforcements on the edge of the map oh right, we got this unit destroyed reinforcements over here for the hand-to-hand -hand combat man the other problem is i don't have a good trench over this way pointing left to guard the flank did we get the last I don't think we got the last battery of artillery. I'm assuming that's their last battery. I, I could be wrong. How much more? We've definitely inflicted a, a lot more casualties on the enemy than they on us, but. It's not really a, a saving grace if they can if they beat me. Got reserves coming forward, but I don't know that they're gonna get there before. Get in the trenches. Oh my god, there's so many of them. Oh my god. Honestly, even taking the enemy guns out at this point won't do much, I don't think. But maybe we can take out their balloons so they won't know every time I move troops. Reminds me of that uh, that scene in Gettysburg where Longstreet's talking about the advantage that the, the Union troops have because of their positioning. And he's like, their cannon probably looking down on us right now. Oh yeah, I stripped these, these trenches. A lot. Okay, let's reposition ourselves in these trenches. On the flank. Showing up most of what's left of our supply. How do these guys lose all that? They can't shoot out of the HQ trench. It kind of sucks. I guess there must have already been some combat in the trench then. I don't think the bombardments have any effect on them. Draw this guy. Let's also start calling in some conscripts just to save some supply. Yep, we're losing men at an alarming rate. Then again, so are they, right? Like, <laughs> in theory, they should be a little bit freaked out about that. Let's try to retake the HQ. We should have some troops to do that. Right, so they're going to try and fight us in hand-to-hand -hand with somewhat weakened troops. Their losses have been staggering. They can't take those kind of losses. We destroyed the enemy balloon, which should help, right? What do they got in these trenches over here anyway? Like, is it just machine guns? They've got to have troops, right? Can you get in the trenches before you get massacred by their MGs? Maybe not. We're going to call some conscripts up that way. Alright, let's withdraw these guys and then we'll put in fresh troops. Our supply is severely depleted. Thank you, I'm aware of that. Let's go destroy some of their guns. I don't know how many troops they have left. They may not have that many. Their assaults certainly seem to have weakened. And their trenches are largely empty. 
All right, let's withdraw this guy now. We'll put a new fresh regular infantry unit in our command post. The enemy requests a ceasefire. The ballad will continue with the allies holding their ground. Um, how much longer is left in the fight? Three minutes. Let's deny. Let's continue to fight. So the enemy may hold their ground, but maybe I can get a chance to destroy some of these enemy MGs. I really consumed a whole bunch of supply. Can we destroy these MGs? A lot of wasted supply. Oh shit. I forgot I had sent all these guys forward. You're all gonna die! Get in the trenches before you all die! There you go, boys. Into the trench. Well, we did lose one point, so if we can take the other, that would be great. You know, like we took, we lost one trench. They can't take the HQ. They for sure, I've never seen the enemy AI abandon an HQ. Got those MGs. These trenches linked, they're not. So let's go in this way over here. Maybe we can take B. They're going to overwhelm my uh, conscripts almost certainly because they're not as good troops. This is like that scene in The Patriot where Cornwallis fires artillery on his own men. Goddamn right it is. Let's do it. Die, you bastards. Got him. We're taking point B. And we've got reinforcement conscripts on the way. Conscripts are nice and cheap. You just need manpower to fill a fill a gap. Meanwhile, we're not going to take back our left flank, I'm assuming. I guess we could try. Let's go ahead and uh, send one conscript squad out there and see what the enemy has in place. I'm assuming they didn't abandon it, but we'll find out. All right, enemy troops are coming our way. Let's block them here because these trenches are linked. So we'll put a conscript and a regular infantry unit on that flank. The enemy is still pushing troops forward here on this objective. A lot of them. We'll spend a lot of our supply here trying to hit these enemy troops in the open. We get him. Did we finish him off. No, but close. Okay, so we're taking that objective, which actually stops the game's timer. They took our left flank, and we are taking theirs. God damn right. Point B is captured. Given that both sides have captured one point, as long as we hold it, I think we've got a pretty good chance of winning the battle. Now they could overwhelm us, that's certainly a possibility. Alright, these troops are dead goners. The enemy has no artillery left. We functionally have no artillery left, because we don't have any... supply left
Okay. I'm might. I don't think I'm gonna have time to get to their HQ. Enemy troops advancing over no man's land. Ready the Mausers. Down they go. Come on, guys. Oh, we ran out of time. Ceasefire. We've run out of time. Okay. Well, at least we bloodied the enemy attack, right? Let's see what they had to spend. What was the prediction? I would consider that's definitely a victory, a minor victory, mind you. Does TH2 lose a control point? We did lose a control point. That was, that did happen. So you can see here, we spent a thousand gold in our replenishment costs. The enemy 2,800, but I don't know if the enemy plays by the same rules because I don't think their gold matters as much. Still, at least in terms of casualties, definitely a victory for us. 800 conscripts and about 8,000 infantry. So about 9,000 German losses in that battle. The allies lost 14,000 regular infantry, 4,000 elite infantry, and 15, 15 light artillery pieces. Uh, for a grand total of, what is that, uh, 18,000 enemy casualties to just shy of 9,000 German casualties. They did take one point, but we took one of theirs. We destroyed one of their balloons, three weapon emplacements destroyed, and four melee combat victories. They had 18 melee combat victories, so slight edge to them for that. Slight. Uh, but nonetheless, a minor victory in defense of the Reich. Let's see all of the details of all of the stuff. All right, go to the world. Let's see if they launch another attack here. All right, everybody. With that being said, we're going to go ahead and wrap this video up here. That's going to do it for episode number eight of the Great War Western Front. Uh, we successfully defended ourselves against a large-scale enemy attack. Uh, they had considerably more resources dedicated to it than we did, but we were able to hold them off, at least prevent uh, a decisive victory. And, and actually, we won a slight victory on the defensive, so... We'll see how things play out in our next video, but until our next video, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you very much for watching, and until next time, I'm out.